You could say the clock is ticking for state lawmakers trying to fully fund our schools. Or you could say there's a time bomb about to go off. I'm really frustrated and frightened. Eden Mack is legislative chair of the Seattle Council PTSA. She says even five years after the McCleary decision, which calls for ample funding for all of our state schools, the legislature is still off target. None of them actually put in enough dollars. Here's a brief look at each plan. The governor wants to raise about $4 billion for our schools through taxes on carbon emissions, capital gains, and businesses. House Democrats are calling for $7.3 billion in revenue for schools, with options like carbon pricing, a capital gains tax, and changes in the state property tax on the table. Senate Republicans don't want new taxes. They're instead looking for $1.7 billion in existing state money. The GOP says it would make our tax system more fair through a so-called levy swap. Districts with high property values like Seattle would pay more to give a boost to property-poor rural districts. A compromise proposal from State Senator Mark Mullet, a Democrat from Issaquah, would turn our local school levies into permanent funding for the state and raise sales taxes on online purchases. The state would add some levy equalization assistance to help districts in need at a two-year cost of $800 million. And that's just not enough. Max says all four proposals come up short on what the legislature promised it would do in 2009 and 2010 raise per pupil funding to about $16,000 by the year 2018. If you don't have the money, you can't hire the teachers, you can't buy the books, you can't have the things that you need. And that's not the only deadline coming up for our schools. This is a crisis. Leslie Harris is vice president of the Seattle School Board, which is also planning for what's called a levy cliff. We are working triple time. In 2010, the state raised the local levy lid, allowing school districts to gain up to 28% of their funding through local voter-approved levies. I got it right. But that percentage drops to 24% in January of 2018, when the state thought it would have McCleary figured out. The loss in levy money? About $30 million for the Seattle School District alone. We will lose and we will lose big. Add in possible cuts from various McCleary fixes, and Seattle schools are facing a potential $74 million shortfall with school budgets and layoff warnings due by the end of this April. We are really hoping that whatever cuts we have, we can make up with moving folks around so that we don't have to lay folks off, but that we backfill for retirement. It's not the news Erin Okuno wants to hear. It is a hard conversation. She's executive director of the Southeast Seattle Education Coalition. ¿Quién es el abuelo? ¿Quién es el número mayor? Which helps so-called Title I schools like Beacon Hill International that have a high amount of students from low-income families. Title I schools and schools that are that have the most need are going to see huge cuts. Akuno is the mother of a preschooler and second grader here at Beacon Hill. And she's concerned dual language learning or other important programs could be reduced or eliminated. Akuno says that as the state and its school districts argue about funding, they're losing sight of the help kids across our state truly need. Just throwing more money and resources into a system that isn't serving students of color well is not going to close the achievement gap. Money does help, but we also need to see systemic change happening to make sure that we're doing what's right for our kids. What is right for our kids' education? What will fulfill the McCleary mandate for a legislature now in contempt of the Supreme Court? In a state searching for those answers for the last five years, time is just about up. What I'm seeing is a lot of stonewalling. We need to plan for next year now. I don't know about you, but that terrifies me.